Have you ever launched a rocket and completely lost sight of it in the sky because you blinked and it was gone? Well, I have. And today, we're going to take my favorite homemade rocket motor and we're going to add a smoke element to the motor that will provide a smoke trail behind the rocket all the way to Apogee, making the launch a lot more fun. The motor we're going to be adding a smoke element to is our Super Monkey motor. This is a PVC case motor filled with flexi fuel, sugar fuel. We've had a lot of fun with this motor and it's launched several 3 inch and 4 inch rockets. Now today's video is not going to be a complete tutorial on how to make this new motor. If you want to know how to make the Super Monkey, we've got a fantastic step by step tutorial on our channel and I'll put a link to that video down in the description. Check that out after this video is done. But we're going to really just concentrate today on the changes that are needed to add a smoke element to this motor. I've already started making the new motor. I've got some of the case done and the nozzle is formed in the end. The only difference is that the PVC pipe was cut one inch longer. That's the extra inch where the smoke element is going to be located. So we'll have the same exact amount of fuel in this new motor as we have in the original Super Monkey motor. We're also going to need to make a small change to the coring process after we pour the fuel. Here I've got the half inch core rod and the core rod alignment tool. The video tutorial for making the Super Monkey motor explains how to make these parts, but we're going to need one additional part. This little one inch spacer. Now this was made from a one inch PVC cap, but this isn't the standard cap. A normal PVC slip cap fits onto the PVC pipe like that. This cap is a little bit different. Sometimes when you buy PVC pipe, it has this bell at one end. And that's so that you can put another piece of PVC in here and keep on going without having to use a coupler. This cap fits into the bell end. This cap can also be used to cap fittings such as T's or elbows or couplings. This is a one inch PVC coupling here and you see it fits into the end of that. And you'll also notice that this cap is flat on one side. So this piece was made out of that. There were some modifications that need to be made. Let me show you what I did. The PVC cap has this small lip at one end. Now we need this part to fit into the inch and a quarter PVC pipe of the motor. So I had to take that lip off and now the part fits nicely into the PVC pipe. I also cut the part down so it's exactly one inch long. And then I made this half inch diameter hole in the end that fits the coring rod. And now we're ready to make the fuel for this motor. Now again, this isn't a tutorial, so I'm not going to be showing that process. But if you want to know how to make the sugar fuel for this motor, take a look at the tutorial for making the Super Monkey motor. So let's head out to the shop. Before making the fuel, I made a little pencil mark inside the PVC pipe, one and three quarters of an inch down from the top. I'll pour the fuel into the motor until it reaches that line. Once the fuel is poured, I'll put the core rod alignment tool onto the core rod and then put the little spacer onto the core rod and place that onto the top of the motor. I'll push the core rod down until it seats into the nozzle. This needs to sit for one hour before we pull out the core rod. I pulled out the core rod, the core rod alignment tool, and the little spacer. Now, admittedly, the little spacer was a little difficult to get out because there was some fuel that had packed in around that part. Um, and there's no real way to grab onto that when it's inside the pipe. So I think if I build this again, I might figure out a way to make a little easier way to pull this out of the motor. But it wasn't difficult. It was just a little bit stuck. The top surface of the fuel looks good. There's just a little bit on the side of the PVC pipe that I'll scrape off with a screwdriver. I am almost ready to make the smoke element for this motor, but before I do, I'm going to wipe off any oil from on top of the fuel and glue this little piece of paper onto the top of the fuel so that when we pour the smoke element in, it won't go down into the core hole. Now we can make the smoke element mixture. Here's what we'll need. I'm using this 5 to 1 two-part epoxy by Total Boat. One pump of the resin and one pump of the hardener will give me 23 grams of epoxy. I'll mix that with 43 grams of very fine potassium nitrate powder that I've ground up in a coffee grinder. 
The mixture is thick, but it's pourable. I'll pour that into the top of the motor, just to the top of the PVC pipe. That epoxy takes a couple of hours to harden, and then I glued on the end cap. Now there's a little bit of an air space between the smoke element and the cap, and I want to fill that with anchoring cement. So I'll start out by drilling a small hole in the top of the end cap. Now in hindsight, I should have drilled that hole in the cap before attaching the cap to the PVC pipe. Not having an air release hole made it a little bit difficult to push the cap onto the pipe. So now I'm going to use this plastic syringe and inject anchoring cement to fill that air gap under the cap. Okay, slight change of plan. I'm going to drill two holes because having just one hole, um, it really doesn't want to go in because the syringe blocks the air coming back out. So we really need a vent hole right next to that one. Now we can fill from one hole until it comes out the other. I'm calling this one the Super Smoking Monkey. Let's see how it works. Now that was absolutely fantastic. The motor provided a good powerful thrust for a little more than one second and that's exactly what we expect from the Super Monkey design. That was followed by a full 30 seconds of thick smoke. Now I would have been perfectly happy with a 10 second smoke trail, but 30 seconds is just great. That is gonna look really fantastic when we launch a rocket. Now I do wanna show you that this type of motor does have some warping and deforming after the burn because of that extended heat from the smoke element. But we didn't get a burn through and that's what matters. Now I did have a camera recording that test in slow motion, so if you want to see that, I'll put it at the end of the video. In our next video, I'll be doing a complete step-by-step -step tutorial for building a rocket to hold this motor. We'll launch it and watch that spectacular smoke trail in action. Make sure you hit that like button before you leave, and be sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our future content. Check out the full selection of Rotary Rocketry merch. There's a link to our shop in the description. You'll also find a link where you can get your very own Rotary Rocketry plushie. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.